What's up, LG? A family, it is Pastor Darius here with Love Gospel Worship Center in Orlando, Florida. All my friends, family from the Bronx and those watching wherever you are, I love you guys, I miss you guys, and it is my pleasure to be able to set off this new series of what does it mean to be called by God today. Key word is today, not yesterday. What does it mean to be called by God today? And um, in the midst of everything that's going on, um, I had three things that I wanted to share with you, but then I started recognizing that there's a fourth thing that's there. Um, and the truth is, is that when we look to be called by God today, it's scary. That, that, that's a true statement. Doing God's work today is not an easy task. Uh, there's so much things that are going on. Now, if you go against the grain and don't follow suit, um, people think you're racist or you're a bigot or, or you're, um, you're, you're hating and, and you, you're all these things that are negative. And that's how the church has been looked on. And yes, there are some fools out there that just act like fools. Um, but true Christianity um, is about doing the will of God. And to be called by God today is scary because there's this thing called cancel culture where they will cancel you. Your family will cancel you. And it really brings me, and I started thinking about um, in the Gospels where it talked about that there would be father against son and daughter against mother. And people are not going to be on the same page because what we believe in and what we need to stand for is not commonplace. It's not the norm. We're not going to fit into a box that people are trying to put us in. And because we represent Christ, it is a scary moment moment to do this, but that's why we know that God gives us boldness, that he gives us tenacity, that he gives us words of wisdom and words of knowledge and discernment to be able to use that in this time and this age. So being called by God today is a scary place to be at, but it's also a wonderful place to be at because we know that God will take care of us and he wants to do greater things in our lives for miracles, signs, wonders, all sorts of things. So be called by God today is a little bit scary, but it's also necessary. And really what I started looking at, and even some of the basics of what does it mean to be called by God today, for some that are watching out there, maybe they're just seeing this for the first time and they don't even know what this means. The first thing that we, what we have to recognize is that as believers, we need to make sure people understand what it is to be saved. What is salvation? What, it calls to, what does it mean to be called by God today is to lead people to salvation. We need to lead them there. And, and Romans 10, 13 reminds us that everyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that has to be what's in our vocabulary. This, this moment of evangelism, it, it doesn't have to be a four point thing. It really comes down to the, that, that God is looking for your heart and he is after you. And maybe life is not good right now, but he wants to transform your life and do some things in you and through you. We look in Acts chapter 16, verse 30 through 31. It reminds us of the Paul and Silas in prison and all the doors open and the, the jailer asked them, what do I need to do to be saved? And there are people out there, but we haven't asked. We haven't been bold enough to ask, look, do you know Jesus Christ? Have you had an experience with him? And when we begin to do that, that is the beginning portion of us being called by God today is to lead people to salvation, to lead them into understanding who God is and that God loves them. And that there was a man named Jesus who died on the cross for their sins. And while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. I know this is basic, but this is something that is so necessary right now in this time and this age. Also, um, one of the other things that we, we look at, what does it mean to be called by God today, is that we need to live a sanctified life. We need to live a life that is holy and set apart for Christ. Not only do we have to lead people to salvation, but then our lives need to represent Christ well. In this, in this time, in this age, people are looking at us. 
They're looking at the church and how we will respond and react to certain things. And let me let you know that people have an expectation of how we normally respond and react. But the Lord is asking us to begin to respond the way that he wants us to respond and to live that a life that is holy and set apart for him. And, and that's what sanctification means, just for those that don't know. It means to be set up apart for a, a special purpose. Um, in Colossians 3.1, it shares this. It's, it says that since when you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. When we are sanctified and want to be holy, our hearts need to be set on things above. There are too many distractions that are going on in this world, whether you're vaccinated or not, whether you, whether you wear a mask or not, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. There's all sorts of distractions. Social media can get you real easily. Next thing you know, you're on there for four hours. All sorts of things are going on. People are dying all over the place. Racial injustice, all this stiff that stuff that's out there that tries to get us to lose track and to get us sidetracked but we need to make sure that we live a life that's sanctified regardless of somebody's choice whether you agree or don't agree the main concern should be does this person know the Lord and if they don't let me help them and it goes back to part one which is salvation our sanctified life should lead people to salvation they should see something different and say what in the world is going on with them they should see something signs, miracles, and wonders happening in, in our life through our testimonies and things that are happening for the people we're praying for, and it should lead people to salvation. This thing of being called by Christ today is very basic. We need to make sure we're following it. If we live a sanctified life, people will see that we are different, and because we live a holy life, it, the scripture tells us that we need to be holy like he is holy. People are watching right now. Watch what the church will do when we talk about um, all the agendas that are going on, whether you identify as a girl or a, or a guy and, and abortion and all this stuff. And they're saying, what is the church's response? What are we going to say today? We need to be careful and make sure that we're living a life that's totally representative of Christ. That's what it means to be called to, by Christ, is that we live a sanctified life so others could be saved. And then the last thing I want to share with you, and I really believe that this is what God is, is trying to speak to many of the people of the church, because it's been so long through pandemic and through closures and through all this other stuff. And it seems like it's happening again, is that we need to be sure what it means to be called by God. And the last thing I want to say for today is that you're in service to him. That means that there's some of you, and I'm just letting you know, this is what the Lord put on my heart. You need to get off your couch. You've been on a recliner with your feet up too long. God is saying there's work to be done. There's things that need to happen. And some of you that have been saved for a long time have lost it because of the pandemic. Because of it, you've gone into this chill mode. You've been, oh, um, all this stuff is bad. And yes, I agree with you. But if we represent Christ and we are ambassadors of Christ, that means that there is a service that needs to happen. And there is a service that, that the people are in need of. Not only your family members, but your community. And that is what God is asking us for. Right now, he's saying, get off the couch. Get, get, go, get off the lawn chair, the beach, or whatever you're doing. There's work to be done and God is calling you. Yes, you. You that are watching right now, you have a gift and a talent that God wants to use. You may say, ah, I don't know about that. I am letting you know right now that God has gifted you and maybe you don't see it, but maybe somebody else will. But the first thing you got to do is make sure that you have called on the name of the Lord to be saved. Once you get saved, you live a different life that's sanctified, set apart for him. And then you go into service. And that's what we see in Acts chapter two, verse 42, all the way down is we noticed that there was a people that were committed to prayer. They were committed to teaching. They were committed committed to um, breaking bread and sharing things with one another. And because they did those things and were in service to one another, the church grew by thousands, by thousands, because there was a people that were willing to do the work and said, you know what? I'm willing to share the stuff that I got. I'm not going to be greedy. I'm not going to go out there and just think about myself. But God is doing something special and dynamic in you. And let your works 
be shown. Let your service be done in the community. There's outreaches happening. There's things that are going on. And we need you. We need you. God is calling after you today. So what does it mean to call to be called by God today? First, you need to remember it's salvation. Once you have salvation, then you live a life that's sanctified, different, not like everybody else. And when you're living that life sanctified and different, people notice that. And when you do service to the community, that service that you do does some amazing things and leads people to the salvation that we all started with. So these three things, really four, because it is scary to be called by God today, yes. But once you, once you understand what it is, God will do something special in you and through you. My, I, my challenge for you today is get off your seats. Get out of chill mode. There's work to be done. And God needs you to do the job that you have been called to do. Yes, you. And if you don't know what your calling is, and maybe you go to Love Gospel, or maybe you're watching this, DM us, let us know. Reach out to somebody at the church and say, look, I don't even know what this what this thing is, this call in my life is and what this dude is talking about. I'm not really sure about that, but I want to let you know that he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And that plan and purpose is great. All you need to do is say yes to him. All you need to is call on the name of the Lord. Ask him to come into your heart. Admit that you're a sinner. Tell him that you're messed up. And then he will come in. But this journey is not a journey that you do alone. That's why being called by Christ today is not an island or a lonely one-on-one -on -one journey. No, you need the, the, the people around you to walk with you through this journey. I'm praying for you guys. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless you. And thank you for joining us in this week's Nuggets of Hope. In this segment, we're learning more about our theme, Called by Christ. And it is our hope that through this um, series, Called by Christ, we can explore our identity, mission, and purpose as a people of God that we can really understand who we are through this thing called by Christ, who we are as a people redeemed by Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit to share the love of the Father. And so to end the, tonight's segment, I would like to leave you with a prayer from Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of peace where there is hatred, let us bring love. Where there is offense, let us bring pardon. Where there is discord, let us bring union. Where there is error, let us bring truth. Where there is doubt, let us bring faith. Where there is despair, let us bring hope. Where there is darkness, let us bring his light. Where there is sadness, let us bring joy. Oh, let me not seek so much to be consoled as much as to console. Let me not seek so much to be understood, but let us look to understand. Let us not look so much to be loved, but let us learn to love. For it is in giving that one receives. It is in self-forgetting that one finds. It is in pardoning that one is pardoned. It is in dying that one is raised to eternal life. Amen. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, that we can walk in the calling that God has prepared for us through his footsteps. I hope you can continue to join us on Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook for another episode of Nuggets of Hope. God bless you.